the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are doing a blind playthrough of Threads of Fate, the first Mythos pack in the uh, Forgotten Age cycle. We, uh, as you may remember, I uh, played through the Doom of Etzli uh, with Ursula Downs, and unfortunately Ursula was uh, unable to make it through that scenario uh, due to some uh, a very painful encounter, uh, not really with the, uh, with the deck, but with the Chaos Bag. The Chaos Bag really throttled us in that uh, scenario, and uh, Ursula was not uh, able to make it through now I had uh, assumed that uh, that would be the end of uh, the end of Ursula uh, because she was in a uh, temple that was collapsing. Lo and behold, I of course uh, later read the uh, the scenario instructions in the the guide and uh, found out that Ursula was not in fact dead. Uh, for some reason, the designers give you a, a second shot and possibly even a third at uh, completing the Doom of Estli and. Uh, so I decided that I would uh, I would take them up on that opportunity, and I did play through it uh, two more times. Unfortunately, uh, Ursula's results were not much better in those two uh, those two scenarios when I replayed it, and uh, she was unable to make it through and ended up getting killed. However, I had uh, I think the the biggest reason that Ursula was struggling in that scenario is due to her lack of enemy management. Fortunately, I had another Ursula deck uh, that I was working through the campaign with, and uh, so I uh, changed it up a little bit and uh, took it up against the Doom of Estli, and uh, it performed uh, quite well. We were able to make it through the uh, the scenario without much trouble. This is the, uh, the deck here, and this is the deck I am uh, going to play in uh, this particular playthrough. Uh, it is, uh, rather than, uh, you may remember in the other Ursula deck, I went for higher education. This time I went for the Disc of Itzamna, and it uh, played a huge role in uh, Doom of Esli, being able to uh, eliminate those enemies before they hit the table makes a huge difference uh, to uh, Ursula's chances of success. She uh, managed to get two copies of the Disc down and uh, remove them. And uh, so that uh, is in the deck. And I also, after uh, I finished uh, the Doom of Esli with this deck, I uh, purchased two copies of Pathfinder to uh, help her with her movement a little bit more. And uh, the uh, weakness in this deck is uh, overzealous. So rather than play through those two scenarios again with this, with this deck, uh, I decided I would just play through Threads of Fate uh, with this one. This is a blind playthrough, of course. I have not played uh, Threads of Fate yet, and so I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing how uh, how we fare. Just for uh, reference sake, the uh, provisions I kept, uh, the supplies I kept all the same. She took uh, one provisions, two medicine, one compass, one rope, and uh, I have the compass down twice for some reason. Well, she has only one compass. And uh, here is a summary of uh, how she's been faring so far. The uh, investigators have earned Ishtaka's trust. Alejandro chose to remain at camp. We earned uh, four experience during the Untamed Wilds, and we suffered one physical trauma and one mental trauma because I failed to bring the blanket and binoculars. Uh, Ursula recovered the Relic of Ages. The Harbinger is still alive. We earned three XP during the Doom of Estli. There are two tally marks under Yig's Fury. During the uh, interlude, the investigators gave custody of the relic to Harlan Ernstone, and uh, Alejandro is continuing his research on his own. Now, in uh, at the beginning of uh, Threads of Fate, there are several decision decisions that you need to make. I decided that uh, I would listen to uh, Ichitaka's tale, which means I had to add a uh, another cultist token to the bag for a total of two and I decided that I would search for Alejandro on my own rather than going to the police. We are set up and ready to go here in uh, Octagon. This uh, scenario is uh, the uh, has three act decks, which is uh, unusual. This is the first time we've seen uh, this in, uh, in a scenario. We are back in Arkham after our trip to the jungle. We have uh, a new location here, the Curiosity Shop. 
and it is connected to uh, north side here. Of course, the north side, downtown, east town, Miskatonic University, and Rivertown locations are all from the core set. We also have another new location, Velma's Diner, which is connected to East Town. And uh, Ursula will begin the scenario here at uh, Rivertown. It's a one shot location with one clue, and it is connected to uh, East Town and uh, Miskatonic University. So I need to add my, uh, my uh, trauma before I forget. Our agenda deck is 1A, the three fates. You have three tasks before you and a limited amount of time before the trail goes cold. Where do you search first? And it has a doom threshold of six and it has the action resign. You don't want to risk taking too long, so you head to safety with the information you have gathered. Now there are three act decks in this. There is uh, Act 1A and uh, 1B. Act uh, 1C and 1D, and Act uh, 1E and 1F. I have uh, done all the setup ahead of time, so we don't have to uh, waste any time doing that. Our Act uh, 1A is Harlan is in danger. Harlan has custody of the relic, but he believes he is being followed. The last time you heard from him, he was in his office at the university. Only investigators in Miskatonic University can spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. So we need two clues to advance that act. Act 1C is search for Alejandro. You've decided to search for Alejandro on your own, believing you will have a better shot at finding him without involving the police. His hotel is in East Town, so you begin your search there. And uh, the objective is only investigators in East Town can spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance, and we will need one clue for that uh, particular act. And our final act is Act 1E, The Guardian's Inquiry. Ishtaka tells you that she saw several Estli artifacts on sale in the strange shop near the northwestern edge of the city. She wants you to head in that direction to investigate further. And the objective in this case is only investigators in Northside can spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. And we need one clue. So we need two clues, one clue, and one clue. There is one clue here at Rivertown. So uh, we can grab this clue early, and then we could probably reach Northside or East Town uh, in one turn. Of course, if we want to rescue, uh, go see about Harlan, we will need two clues, which will take us to Miskatonic University. We are playing Threads of Fate on uh, standard difficulty. The skulls, which there are two, are minus X. X is the highest number of doom on a cultist enemy. As you may know, we have the cultist set in this, uh, in this uh, particular scenario. So that uh, means uh, Acolytes, the Wizard of the Order, and the Mysterious Chanting. So this uh, sixth doom threshold could uh, rock it up quite quickly. I'm a little concerned about this just because uh, Ursula really isn't uh, isn't in uh, can't take down enemies very easily. So those uh, that doom is probably going to stay in play. So we're going to have to uh, race pretty quickly. The cultists of which there are two are minus two, and if you do not succeed by at least one, you take one damage. That's uh, that's pretty nasty. The uh, tablet, there are no tablets, and there is one elder thing. It is minus two, and if you fail, you lose one of your clues. So the uh, chaos bag isn't that bad here, only minus twos, and, uh, but the, uh, they do have some negative, negative, negative effects if we uh, happen to fail. We'll lose clues or take damage. So we will have to keep that in mind. I did have the Relic of Ages in my deck, so I had to remove it ahead of this scenario. And as well as we remove the, uh, we place the Town Hall, which is uh, connected to downtown, but it starts out of play. We uh, have Ichitaka here, the Forgotten Guardian. She is a four cost asset with uh, combat agility and a wild icon. She's got the ally Estli Wayfair traits. You get plus one combat, plus two instead while attacking an enemy with Victory X. You get plus one agility, plus two agility instead while attempting to evade an enemy with Vengeance X. 
and as a response after you add an enemy to the victory display exhaust Ichitaka you and Ichitaka each heal one horror she's got three health and two sanity and we also had to remove the expedition journal from play it's a two cost asset with two uh, intellect icons it has the item and tome trait and you may take an additional action during your turn which you which can only be used to explore so uh, I don't think that's going to play much of a role in uh, this particular scenario but uh, perhaps it is a reward that we will get and uh, if we do head back into the jungle at some point which it does seem we will be doing that uh, that extra action will come in very handy the as I mentioned the uh, the weakness in this particular uh, Ursula deck is overzealous we are ready to draw our opening hand so we will shuffle up and we will see how we do for our opening hand let's see we get an uh, unearth the ancients an inquiring mind we get dr. Ellie Horowitz our uh, ally as well as a copy of Pathfinder and another copy of dr. Ellie Horowitz I uh, like dr. Ellie and so I think what we'll do is we will mulligan the unearthly agents the inquiring mind and one copy of dr. Ellie Horowitz and that should give us if we can get dr. Ellie Horowitz down we might uh, be able to get uh, get our disc of its Omna down really quickly and that will protect us from uh, any uh, shenanigans that the uh, encounter deck has in store and of course that Pathfinder will help us move around this map that much quicker so let's see what we draw we get a hyper awareness a perception and a path uh, a field work so uh, a good hand I think I like that hand. We've got uh, most of the tools we need. We've got a, a hyper awareness as well as a field work, so those both should help us. Uh, we don't. Uh, we're going to have to play slow though because we don't have uh, any of our. We uh, don't have a way to make these cheaper, so we'll probably get down Ellie and the Pathfinder first, and then we will work on getting that hyper awareness and field work down in later turns. All right, I'm pumped. Let's get this uh, game started. Let's give uh, Ursula her three actions. I believe as our first action, we are going to play Dr. Ali Horowitz for three resources. And uh, when we uh, play her, we can trigger her response to search the top nine cards of our deck for a relic asset and attach it to her. So let's do that now. We will look at the top nine cards. Let's see, hope there's a disc in there somewhere. And there's no disc. So we whiff on that hard. That's unfortunate. I was really hoping we'd be able to get to get off to a uh, flying start there, but uh, no disc, unfortunately. So we will shuffle that up. I think what we'll do is we will grab this clue here at, uh, I guess we have to decide first of all where we want to go. Do we want to do Harlan or search for Alejandro? I don't really care about Alejandro all that much. He was kind of acting suspiciously while we were in the jungle, so I'm not all that concerned about him. Uh, Ishtaka is our friend, so I'm, uh, I'm thinking that maybe we should go after the Guardian's Inquiry first. And uh, that means we need to get to north side, and the easiest way to do that is to get uh, move through uh, Miskatonic and up to north side. Let's grab the try to grab this clue first. We are at Rivertown. We are a four versus one. I think that's going to be perfectly fine. Chaos bag says minus three, so uh, we were just fine, close enough. And uh, we do get to move, or we can move here. So we will use our third action to move over here to Miskatonic University. We will flip that over. It's a four shroud location with two clues. And as an action, we may search the top six cards of our deck for a tome or spell card and add it to your hand, shuffle your deck, and it's worth a victory point. We do get a free uh, investigate action when we move thanks to uh, Ursula's response. So we will take that now. It's a four versus four. I'm going to pitch this, uh, commit this copy of Perception to go six versus four. See what the Chaos Bag has to say. Chaos Bag says Elder Sign. 
Wow, that's nice. And after this test ends, we may move to a connecting location. Uh, do we want to do that? Do we want to move or do we want to stay? It's worth a victory point. That's, uh, that's important. We do have two clues now, though. So we could advance Harlan's... We could do Harlan's uh, Act 1A here. Um, hmm. I'm not going to move. I'm going to stay put. I think since we are, we do get to draw a card for the perception. There is an emergency cache. That's awfully nice to see. That will help us uh, get down our Pathfinder and uh, hyper awareness and field work. Let's. Uh, we might as well advance. Uh, Harlan is in danger. We have the two clues. So let's uh, see what happens here. We will spend our two clues and. Uh, Flip this over. Whoa. It's Harlan. All right. So we find Harlan at Miskatonic University. Harlan uh, Ernstone is an asset. He's got the uh, historical theorist. He's a bystander at Miskatonic. We put Harlan Ernstone into play in East Town. Okay, so he's up here now. And we... You can take an action to discard the top three cards of your deck to parlay. You try to snap Ernstone out of his daze. Test four willpower. If you succeed, place one clue on him from the token pool. Okay, so discard top three cards of our deck to parlay. And we need uh, test four. So that's going to be a little difficult, I think, for Ursula. But uh, we do have the field work, so if we do move into Harlan's location, we can uh, we can get that plus two bonus, which might be helpful, or which will be helpful in that case. Okay, so Harlan is now in play, so we uh, ah shoot flipped over the wrong one. There we go. Okay. We will uh, pretend we didn't see that. All right. So uh, Act 2A is Harlan's curse. There is no sign of Harlan in his office, but one of his assistants in the administration building informs you that he took off, took the day off and went to his home in East Town. Objective, if there is one clue per investigator on Harlan Ernstone, you must remove them and immediately advance. Okay, so now our goal is to go to uh, East Town and uh, parlay with Harlan. Fair enough. Now we've got uh, we've got a couple goals to uh, to achieve. That uh, that's the end of our turn. So we will draw a card. There's another copy of field work. We will gain a resource, and we will. Uh, Add a doom. First encounter card of the game is going to be the secret must be kept. It's a scheme. Peril. Test three willpower. If you fail, take one damage and one horror. For each act deck the investigators have completed, this skill test gets plus one difficulty and deals plus one damage and plus one horror if it is failed. Wow, that, uh, that could get uh, very painful towards the end of this scenario if we uh, happen to complete any of these act decks. So that's a three. It's going to be a three for a damage and a horror. That's pretty painful. Uh, we don't have anything we can pitch to this, so we're just going to go three versus three. Chaos Bag says minus one. So we are failing. We will take a damage and a horror. Uh, we're going to let Ellie take the horror, and we will take the damage. And that uh, is the mythos phase. All right. We want to... Uh, I would like to get this victory point before we leave, so we don't have to come back here. Unfortunately, we're testing four versus four, which is not... Not ideal, and I don't have anything besides my uh, hyper-awareness that I can pitch to that. I think our uh, first action is going to be to play our Pathfinder for three resources. 
So now we've got an extra move every turn as long as there are no enemies around. So during your turn, if, there, if you are not engaged with any enemies, Exhaust Pathfinder move to a connecting location. We could do that now and maybe come back to Miskatonic University later once we have some, uh, some bonuses. Or what we do is we spend the turn here. Yeah, that might be better. Um, actually, we can do the we can do it all here. I think so. If we use our second action to play our uh, our emergency cash to gain three resources, then we can use our third action to play a field work. Or do we want to do field work or hyper awareness? Uh, I think field work is going to be better because then we can come back and get the plus two at uh, Miskatonic University. So we will spend the two there. Now we don't have any more actions left, but we actually have two left because we can use a uh, we can use the Pathfinder as well as our free uh, investigate. So I am going to uh, exhaust Pathfinder to move Ursula up to north side. We will flip that over. North side is a two shroud location with, or sorry, a three shroud location with two clues, and we can spend five resources to gain two clues from the token pool group limit once per game, and it's worth a victory point as well. We can use we can now use our free investigate action. So we can uh, after we move to a location, if that location has at least one clue, we can exhaust field work to get plus two for this test. So we are actually a six versus three. Chaos bag says auto fail, of course, because uh, that's just the way it goes. I'm afraid the chaos bag uh, is never our friend. And so uh, all of our plans there went for naught, but we did get uh, we did get a couple more assets down. So that's uh, we'll have to be happy with that. We will go to there are no enemies that we have to worry about, so we will uh, go to the upkeep phase. Draw a card. There is our unearth the ancients. A little too late. We might be able to use that for uh, hyper awareness, or we can simply pitch it to a. Uh, in, uh, an investigate test. Uh, we did gain a resource, so we go to our next uh, turn here. The uh, We've added a doom, so our encounter card is going to be, there's an acolyte, so that is, that's what I was afraid of. He's of course got three fight, one health, and two evade. Humanoid cultist spawns at any empty location, and after he enters play, we place one doom on it. So that's going to speed up the game a little bit. Let's put him, where do we want to put him? Um, hmm. We could put him at the university use our field work to uh, and then use our field work to boost our combat and maybe kill him he's a three we'd be a three that's not uh, that's not likely though um, hmm. or we just stick him out of the way somewhere where we don't uh, have to worry about him for the time being uh, I don't like my odds of killing him at the moment, so let's put him at Rivertown. And we will add a Doom to him. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. I was hoping we'd get a Relic out before that happened, but uh, unfortunately not. Okay, so we get our three actions. We need one clue to advance Act 1E. So let's do an investigate first. We are four versus three. Chaos Bag says there's that cultist. That's a minus two, so we will fail and take a damage. Ouch, that's uh, painful. 
Um, okay, that's not a great plan. I think what I'll do is I'm going to pitch the Unearth the Ancients. I'll commit that to gain plus two. So now we're a six versus three. Hopefully that'll be enough. Chaos Bag says Skull. That is uh, a minus one because there is one Doom on a cultist enemy, but we do succeed. So we gain a clue there. That's our second action. Uh, we have a clue, so we can advance this act. We are at north side. We are indeed. OK, let's advance the act. So we will spend a clue, go over here and find the right uh, act deck. The uh, Having three act decks really pushes Octagon to its limit. I had to use all the uh, all of the slots that were available here. So we'll flip over Guardian. OK, so we encounter another person. Maria da Silva, wealthy patron, she's an asset bystander. Revelation put Maria da Silva into play in the curiosity shop. So she heads over here. And can take an action, spend one resource, parlay. You chat with Maria about the artifact on sale. Test three intellect. If you succeed, place one clue on her from the token pool. Okay, so we need to uh, we need to do a couple of parlay tests here, and we will advance to Act Two E, which is Strange Relics. Strange Relics is uh, inside the shop. A middle-aged woman wearing the height of fashion inspects the Estly relics on display with admi admiration. How did those relics get here? And what does this woman know about all the fuss? If there are one uh, clue per investigator on Maria de Silva, you must remove them and immediately advance. Okay, so we've got two, uh, two pretty clear uh, objectives. We can go to the curiosity shop and uh, parlay with Maria, or we can go to uh, East Town and parlay with Harlan. Uh, I wish I'd brought my fine clothes, that's for sure at this point. So we did two investigates. Now what we could do, we could use our free... Now if we go to the curiosity shop, we could use Pathfinder to go to the curiosity shop that's assuming there's a clue at the curiosity shop, though. What's the odds there's a clue at the curiosity shop? We're still favored if we need to parlay with her. So let's give it a shot. We will, uh, we will uh, exhaust Pathfinder to move to the curiosity shop. Curiosity shop is a two shroud location with two clues. North side is connected to the curiosity shop. While you are in the curiosity shop, reduce the cost of each relic asset you play by two. Wow, that's a pretty, a pretty sweet deal. If we had a, uh, excuse me, if we had a disc of uh, its Omni in our hand, and it's also worth a victory point. Okay, so now we can either grab a clue there. Uh, we do get a free investigate action. So we might as well take it. Uh, we're going four versus two. Chaos Bag says minus two, so we do succeed. So we do grab a clue off the Curiosity Shop. And, oh, but we can't do that if we... Yeah, okay, how do we do this? Do we bother parlaying with her? How does that work? If we move, we can trigger her action. We can take an investigate action, but we'd have to use the field work on that investigate test. Uh, I guess I'm okay with that. I think the chaos bag is still pretty favorable to us. 
at this stage. So we will spend a resource. We'll stick with the plan here. We'll go with uh, spend a resource now to parlay with uh, Maria. So it's a four versus three. Chaos bag says minus five. Well, that's uh, that's a failure. Uh, that would have been a failure regardless. So that uh, will be our turn. No enemies on the pl in the t on in play except for this cultist, and he's not going anywhere. So we will draw a card and gain a resource. There is our second copy of Hyper Awareness. Should try to get that down at some point. And we go to the next Mythos phase. So we have four Doom in play. Encounter card is going to be Words of Power. It's a hex. Put Words of Power into play in your threat area. If there are one or more enemies at your location with Doom on them, you cannot damage those enemies or discover clues at your location. Take two actions to discard words of power. So that is uh, that has no effect on us at the moment, but it could come into uh, to play later. All right, so we've got our three actions again. Now, do we bother parlaying with her? Uh, how do we do this? I'd like to get the bonus, but I can't get the bonus until I have, uh, unless I use my field work. So I could move to north side. Move to north side, take the investigate action to grab the clue. Move back and parlay. Okay, so we will exhaust the Pathfinder to move back to north side. We will take our free investigate action. We'll just go four versus three straight up. Chaos bag says minus one, so we do grab that clue. Uh, what am I doing taking actions off? I, we used our Pathfinder for that. Okay, so yeah, we've taken two actions and haven't actually spent any actions. So we've got three actions left. We will take an action and move back to the curiosity shop. I will exhaust field work at this point to give us plus two skill value on our next skill test. We will try to parlay with Maria da Silva. So we are now a six versus three on the parlay. Chaos bag, oh, Pete's sakes, chaos bag, not again. Let's not go down this road again. Minus five again. So that is a failure. Uh jeez. Um nah. Well, we could try to grab this other clue at the curiosity shop, but that's gonna turn off our field work, and I don't really want to do that. I think I'm going to take an action. I'm going to get another copy. Oh, we had to spend a resource to do that, didn't we? Yeah, okay. So we can't play our other field work now. Um, hmm. I guess I am just going to, I hate to waste this action. So I'm going to investigate four versus two at the curiosity shop we get a elder thing that's minus two if we fail we lose a clue but we do not lose a clue we gain a clue so we've gained a couple of victory points here unfortunately we have uh, failed both uh, parlay tests against maria that uh, really should have been ours we go to uh, upkeep we will refresh our cards draw a card there is a disc Nice to see that. Uh, that's going to be three resources, though. We're going to need to get some more resources. And we will add a Doom. We're up to five of six Doom. 
Encounter card this turn is going to be another The Secret Must Be Kept. Scheme Peril, test three willpower. If you fail, take a damage and a horror for each act. Deck the investigator has completed. The skill test gets plus one difficulty and deals plus one damage and horror. All right, we're just going straight up here. So there's another minus one, so we fail. I think, uh, I think Ellie takes it for us this time. She's not doing much else. Since she didn't get us a, uh, a relic, she might as well take the hit for us this time. All right, so we are going to advance next turn. We get our three actions. Now, I really want the disc out. I almost want the disc out more than I want Maria. Um, we could always head over to, to Harlan, but that's going to be a tough test for us. That's going to be... Uh, the best we could do would be 5 versus 4. Um, or we go to... He's in East Town. Alejandro is in East Town too, is he not? So we might as well head over there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to gain a resource as my first action. I am going to spend all three resources to play my Disc of Itzamna as my second action. As my third action, I'm going to move back to north side. I'm going to exhaust my Pathfinder to move downtown. Downtown is a three shroud location with one clue. And uh, we can take an action to gain three resources. I'm going to use my free action. I free investigate. I'm going to exhaust my pathfinder, or sorry, not my pathfinder, my field work to gain plus two. So we're going to be six versus three. Chaos bag says another elder thing. That's a minus two. So we do succeed and grab that clue. We've got four clues. We've got our disc out though, which has that response when a non elite enemy spawns at our location. We can uh, discard it and uh, discard that enemy. Okay, that's going to be our turn. We will refresh our cards, draw a card. There's a manual dexterity. Not much help at the moment. Gain a resource and we will uh, go to the next turn. We are at six of six doom. It is turn six, so we will, uh, we will remove the doom from this acolyte and we will flip over our agenda. Agenda 1B is at the sun's peak. The town is bustling as noon comes and goes. University students travel from class to class, business people take breaks from their busy office lives, and in East Town, Velma's diner is abuzz with the lunch rush. Despite this veil of normalcy, the curtain has been lifted. You see this town for what it really is, an endless mire of secrets. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. If there are only two act decks in play, place one doom on agenda 2A as it is revealed. Uh, there are not two act decks in play. There are three. So that uh, has no effect. So we will shuffle these back in. All right. And if there are only two act decks in play, place one doom on agenda two A's. It is revealed, so we don't have to worry about that. There we go. Agenda two A is behind the curtain. This conspiracy runs much deeper than you had imagined. The more time you spend investigating these mysteries, the more you come to realize they are linked to one another. At the center of these secrets is an ending enigmatic organization manipulating events behind the scenes and it has the action resign you don't want to take too long so you head to safety with the information you have gathered and it has a six uh, a doom threshold of six we have to draw an encounter card which is going to be conspiracy of blood this is the uh, beautiful art from the pack it's a hex 
Attach conspiracy of blood to the current agenda. Attached agenda gets minus one doom threshold. That's a new uh, that's a new ability. So it's actually a five now. Each cultist enemy gains parlay. Test for willpower. If you succeed, discard one copy of Conspiracy of Blood from play. If you fail, place one doom on this enemy. Interesting. So we can uh, now parlay with cultists to remove the, uh, the Conspiracy of Blood. I really wish I brought my uh, fine clothes. I, I like playing... Uh, fine clothes in a lot of decks these days just for that uh, one health and uh, sanity but uh, this scenario it's proving to be uh, extremely valuable it would be extremely valuable all right well we have five turns and uh, we aren't going to be parlaying with many cultists at the moment so uh, we don't have to worry about that so we will uh, gain our actions. And we have... Now we've got plenty of clues. We can get to Harlan this turn. We can also uh, do East Town, which is Act 1C. Uh, we can uh, spend a clue there. So let's do, see this is the problem, I want to investigate, but I also want to use that, uh, that field work. Uh, what we could do, uh, it doesn't help us if we put both field works out at the moment. Uh, I'm going to wait, I think. I will use my Pathfinder. I'm going to move to East Town. East Town flips. It's a two shroud location with one clue. While you were in East Town, reduce the cost of each ally asset you play by two. That's fine. I'm not going to bother inv using my investigate action because I want to. I want to uh, exhaust my field work to get the bonus to uh, the parlay. I've got to discard the top three cards of my deck to do that. We lose a magnifying glass, a pathfinder, and an emergency cash. I would have liked uh, a couple of those cards. So we are going to parlay, but we are only going five versus four because we only have uh, the plus two from field work. Let's hope we do it. Chaos Bag says zero, so we do succeed. And uh, so we place a clue on him from the token pool. All right, and that is enough to advance Act 2A. So we do advance. All right. Oh no! Harlan is crazed by the curse. Oh crap. Uh, he's got four fight, two health, and three agility. Or sorry, four combat, two health, and three evade. He's humanoid, he's cursed, and he's elite. Switch this card with the bystander version of Harlan Earnstone, removing that version from the game. Attach the set-aside Relic of Ages to Harlan Earnstone. Advance to Act 3A. Recover the Relic. All right, so Harlan goes out of play. Uh, we'll dump him in here where I've been dumping all my other out-of-play stuff. Uh, he comes into play here. I guess he would be engaged with us. So what does Words of Power do? Enemies... Uh, with doom on them. You cannot damage those enemies or discover clues. He has no doom on him yet. Okay, so we attach the relic to him and advance to recover the relic. Okay, so that one goes up here. Recover the relic is uh, Act 3A, recover the relic you've discovered who is carrying the relic. Now you must secure it from them, whatever the cost. While Relic of Ages is attached to an enemy, that enemy gets plus two health. So uh, Harlan has four health. And uh, if the enemy with the Relic of Ages, um, if the enemy, the Relic of Ages is attached to leaves play, we advance. Okay, well, uh, 
Ursula is not going to be able to kill a 4 health enemy. So let's hope there's another way of dealing with Harlan. Says, after you successfully evade Harlan Earnstone by three or more, add him to the victory display. And he's worth a victory point. Afflicted by a strange curse, Harlan suddenly attacks. Okay, so by three or more, we've got to evade this guy? Wow, that's not easy. Okay, uh, we do have, uh, we do have some, uh, we've got a manual dexterity and we could double field work maybe. Three or more, that's brutal. Um, that did take us an action to do that. Okay, I think what we need to do, we need to evade Harlan right now, but we're not going to be able to evade him by three or more anytime soon. We're going to need to set that up. What could we do? If we double field work, that would be four, five, six with uh, uh, manual dexterity. So we'd be at 10 versus three. I like those odds a lot better. We are going to try to evade Harlan the old-fashioned way. So we will go four versus three. Uh, I think I'm going to pitch one of my hyper-awareness here. We're going to go five versus three. Chaos bag. Chaos bag. Come on, buddy. Minus five, so that's a big failure. And let's do it again. Uh, four versus three. Chaos bag gives us another minus five. Oh, chaos bag, you uh, you drive me crazy sometimes. So we've seen a lot of minus fives. Harlan is uh, going to attack us this turn. So that's going to be a damage and a horror during the enemy phase. And what else is going to happen? Um, nothing. We just go to upkeep. So we refresh our cards. Uh, during upkeep, we could advance this uh, we can advance this act, the search for Alejandro. I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend a clue. We'll advance this act, but we're doing it. Go away. We are going to do it during the uh, upkeep. So we, we find Henry DeVoe, friend of Alejandro. He's a bystander. Put Henry DeVoe into play at Velma's Diner. He's, uh, I guess he uh, took advantage of the lunch rush. Choose and discard a card from your hand parlay. If you discuss, you discuss Alejandro's whereabouts, test three intellect. If you succeed, place a clue on this card from the token pool. So we need to go find our next act, which should be, uh, nope, that's the wrong one. So this one, Friends in High Places. Friends in High Places, you can't get into Alejandro's hotel room, so you decide to question several of the occupants in the neighboring rooms. One of them informs you that Alejandro has been meeting often with an acquaintance of his, a government official named Henry DeVoe. They tend to meet nightly at Velma's diner. Perhaps you should pay Henry a visit? If there are one clue per investigator on Henry DeVoe, you must remove them and immediately advance. Okay, so we know what uh, we know what our plan is here. Okay, so we uh, draw a card, inquiring mind. Wow, that's going to be helpful. We can gain five. We can go to nine versus three. 
what could we draw minus three so we could do it maybe next turn we could actually place Harlan in the victory display next turn okay that inquiring mind changes things up we will gain a resource we go to our next turn, next mythos phase, it's turn seven. Of course, our doom threshold is minus one, so we've only got five turns. Encounter card is gonna be the wizard of the order. Oh no, this uh, guy does not spawn at our location, unfortunately. Uh, so we have to put him somewhere empty. He is trouble for Ursula. He is big trouble for fight, two health, uh, two evade, spawn at an empty location. He's got retaliate. At the end of the mythos phase, place one doom on the wizard of the order. Uh, where do we put him? Uh, I think we put him downtown. Okay, and he's going to get a doom. Dang, he is a big problem can't kill him either that's the issue I simply cannot kill him without uh, I could kill him if I draw I've uh, or what's that one uh, it's, the name is escaping me uh, with the uh, the seeker card that I can uh, damage get plus damage for clues it'll come to me uh, so yeah we're gonna have to try to kill that guy or it's going to cause us to rocket through the uh, rocket, absolutely rocket through these agenda decks. Okay. And words of plot power would come into play. Uh, we cannot damage them or discover clues, so we would have to get rid of that words of power before we have a chance to kill the wizard. Very well. We gain our three actions. Okay, we have a chance. We can try to deal with Harlan. We've got five. Uh, we'd be nine versus three. Might as well try. So we'll commit the uh, inquiring mind for three wild icons and uh, manual dexterity for two agility icons. We're going nine versus three to, uh, to try to evade Harlan. We get minus two, awesome. Okay, so we uh, are an eight versus three, so we do succeed, successfully evade Harlan by three or more. So we uh, will draw a card for manual dexterity. There's another disc, and uh, we add, after you successfully evade Harlan by three or more, we add him to the victory display. So, all right, he's gone. Ooh, that's a big load off my shoulders. Uh, and if the enemy, the Relic of Ages, is attached to Leaves Play, we advance. Okay, Act 3B, the Relic is recovered. If the Relic of Ages was attached to a Brotherhood Cultist, okay, that doesn't matter. And uh, if the Relic of Ages is attached to Harlan Earnstone, that is the one. Uh, Harlan snaps out of his days and collapses, holding his head in pain. What was I? His eyes widen as he realizes what he has done and pulls the relic out of his coat, offering it to you. T -t -t Take it, he says. You can keep it safer than I can. The investigator nearest to Harlan Earnstone's location takes control of the Relic of Ages, remove the remainder of the A-B act deck from the game. If another act card is in play continue playing otherwise proceed to r1 okay so we get the relic uh, takes control of the relic okay so we've got the relic and we remove the remainder of the act a b deck from the game if another act card is in play we keep on going okay so Uh, yes, we are, we are okay. 
yeah this uh these three act acts really play havoc with uh with octagon just because when you delete one it wants to flip over others and move them around so i've got to be careful uh when i'm uh, moving these around so we remove the rest of the act deck from the game all right so we've got two acts left we've got two actions left that was a big relief uh, so far we've got a couple of we've got three vps which is pretty uh that's okay uh, we can get a fourth at uh miskatonic university we have some actions remaining what do we do here we've got to discard a card from our hand if we want to parlay with henri devo we can use our uh, we could do we could pathfinder over for free exhaust our field work if there's a clue at Velma's to give us plus two so we'd be going six versus three we can discard this other disc from our hand let's do that okay so we will exhaust pathfinder to move to Velma's Velma's is a two shroud location with zero clues. Oh, so no, uh, no field work shenanigans. Triple action. You kill some time at the diner and listen to the conversations of the patrons around you. Gain two clues from the token pool. Limit once per game. Okay, so there's nothing at Velma's for us except Henri. We can't use our field work here. Uh, so, where do we go? What do we do here? Uh, we need to place a clue on him to advance. So we can, we're just gonna have to go four versus three or we could get down, we're running out of clues here on the table. In fact, I think there's just the one at East Town and the one at Miskatonic University. So, hmm. I'm gonna spend two, whoops, wrong one. We'll spend two resources. Let's get our hyper awareness down so we can start, to, we've got a bonus there. And we will just, uh, we're going to go four versus three to parlay with uh, Henry. Chaos Bag says plus one. Hey, look at that. Chaos Bag throws us a bone for once. So we get uh, five versus three, so we do place a clue on him from the token bank. Uh, we've got to discard a card from our hand. Before I get forget, we will do that with the disc. And... That means we advance. If there is one clue per investigator on Henri Devo, you must uh, remove them and immediately advance. So we immediately advance. Oh no, Henri is an evil Henri. Henri Devo is evil. Man, I sort of knew that since I have to scan the cards, but oh, brother, another enemy. Ursula really doesn't like enemies. She just uh, she cannot handle them very well. Uh, we did spend an action to parlay with him, so we have one action remaining. Let's see what Henri does. Alejandro's kidnapper. Aha! I knew it. He's got uh, four fight, three health, and uh, two evade. That's nice. Humanoid conspirator and elite. Revelation, switch this card with the bystander version of Henri Devo, removing that version from the game. Attach the set aside Alejandro Vela to Henri Devo, advance to Act 3C, Alejandro's plight. And he has retaliate, and he's worth a VP. Now, I didn't uh, set aside an Alejandro, so we're just going to pretend that we've got one. Uh, 
let's see here. So we've got to advance to Alejandro's plight. Okay, let's do that. Should be this one. No, that's Alejandro's prison. This is Alejandro's plight. Alejandro's plight. You believe you have discovered the identity of Alejandro's kidnapper. Now you must fight to rescue your companion. While Alejandro Vela is attached to the enemy, that enemy gets plus two health. If the enemy Alejandro Vela is attached to leaves play advance. Well, that's not going to happen. Uh, there is no way in hell that Ursula is going to be able to kill a five health enemy. That's not happening. So, our best bet, we've only got the one other... Uh, this act is pretty much closed off to us, so we can't do anything with it. So, we have one action remaining. We might as well evade Henri. We're going four versus... Four versus two. That's okay. Four versus two, we get a zero. So he is evaded, but he is going to engage us, uh, re engage us this turn anyway. So we will dump him into that pile of out of play cards. Okay, so that, uh, yeah, that uh, pretty much. Uh, locks that act out because we can't kill him. We have some enemies on the table, but uh, Henri was evaded, so we don't have to worry about his attack. Uh, the wizard and the acolyte aren't going anywhere, so we will simply go to our uh, upkeep. Henri will re-engage with us. We will draw a card. There's a deduction, gain a resource, and we will add a doom. So we are at three of five doom. It's turn eight. Encounter card is going to be false lead. If you have no clues, false lead gains surge. If you have one or more clues, test four intellect for each point you fail by. Place one of your clues on your location. Okay, well, that's. I'm not sure how many clues we actually need in this game anymore. Uh, I'm quite happy to dump them here at Velma's Diner since it's got worth no VPs. 4-4, uh, four, four, let's just go straight up. Chaos Bag gives us a minus 3, so we are uh, 4 versus 1, so that's going to be 3 clues. So we lose all of our clues at Velma's Diner, but... Uh, that's uh, fine by me. Okay, so uh, what is uh, not engage with an enemy? Okay. And at the end of the mythos phase, we need to add another doom to our friend over here, the Wizard of the Order. So we are going to advance next turn whether we want to or not. So we've got a turn basically to get over to back to Maria here and see if we can't figure this, uh, figure her out. We could also make a run for this uh, clue at uh, Miskatonic University. I'll try to grab that. Okay, we get our three actions. First action we've got to evade a la, uh, Henri here. So we are going for, let's uh, get rid of that field work to go five versus two. Chaos Bag gives us an, hey, now there's an elder sign I can use. So we do evade Henri. And the elder sign is plus one after this test ends. You may move to a connecting location. Damn right we're going to do that. So we get to move for free. Henri is stuck over here at uh, Velma's Diner. Now we can move again. And then we're going to have to evade the Acolyte. And then we want to move to Velma's or to Miskatonic University. 
So we'll spend another action to move to River Town. The Acolyte will engage us. Now I could try to kill the Acolyte or I could just simply evade the Acolyte. If I want to kill the Acolyte, I'd probably have to use my field work and I don't like that option very much. So we are just going to go uh, four versus two. Chaos Bag says minus one, so we successfully evade the Acolyte. And that was our third. So we evaded him, but we got a free move. Two, one, evade. So we're at zero, but we do have Pathfinder. Since we are not engaged with an enemy, we can move over here to uh, Miskatonic University. When I do that, I'm going to use my field work to give us plus two. I'm also going to pitch this uh, deduction just to help us out a little bit and uh, give us another plus one. So we are going to go four, five, six, seven versus four. Chaos bag says minus two. So we are successful there and we grab that clue which uh, we want just because of the uh, the victory point. So right now we've got one, two, three, four VPs. That's pretty good. Uh, we can give, we can try uh, Maria next turn. If we've got to kill Maria, then we're going to just resign because we can't kill her and uh, go from there. All right, upkeep uh, enemies. No enemies are hunters, so we don't have to worry about those. Uh, during the upkeep, we ready all the cards. We will draw a card. There's a perception. That'll help with, the, uh, with that parlay test. And we will gain a resource. We are advancing. So we will remove these two doom. I believe this conspiracy of blood goes away. So we will remove it and we flip behind the curtain. We are on agenda 2B, the sun sets. The streets begin to empty as evening approaches. When the office buildings shut their doors, the clubs open theirs in places both public and hidden from view. In downtown Arkham, the Ward Theatre is well lit and filled to capacity. The surrounding streets, however, are eerily quiet. Only soft footsteps from nearby alleyways, alleyways hint at any sign of life and a cold wind whistles through the air. The workday night, the mer sorry, the workday might have ended, but your work is far from over. The figures walking down the street start to fill, fill you with a sense of dread instead of comfort. Shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. If there are only two act decks in play, place one doom on agenda 3A as it is revealed. If there is only one act in play, act deck in play, place two doom on it. So there is only one act. There are two act decks, so we are going to place one doom when we reveal agenda 3A. So those go shuffled back in to the uh, encounter deck. And we are going to place a doom on the, this agenda. Agenda 3A, hidden entanglements. Who can you trust in this city of lies? Arkham may be safe from the perils of the jungle, but you are far from safe here. Each passing stranger in the dark of night could be a kidnapper, a thief, or a killer. Each glance they send your way could be the last thing you ever see. And it has the action resign. You don't want to take you don't want to risk taking too long, so you head to safety with the information you've gathered. Doom threshold of six, but we've had to add a doom, and we're gonna be adding another doom here to that uh, to that wizard. We need to draw an encounter card. Just going to give that deck one more shuffle. And in 
encounter card for this turn is there's the Night Gaunt. Hunting Night Gaunt. It's got uh, three fight, four health, and one evade. It's a monster Night Gaunt hunter. While attempting to evade hunting Night Gaunt, double the negative modifier of each revealed chaos token. It'll hit you for a damage and a horror. However, I do have my Disc of Itzamna, which I can use when a non-elite enemy spawns at your location. Discard the disc to discard that enemy. I'm going to discard the disc. Goodbye, Night Gaunt. And uh, once again, the disc uh, pays huge dividends here uh, against uh, for Ursula, who uh, is not equipped for combat. So uh, getting rid of that Night Gaunt is absolutely huge. Okay. Nice. We do have to add a doom to our uh, to the wizard. So we are at two of six. So we've got a couple more turns left. We just need to check out what we do with Maria here. And uh, depending on that, we may uh, be resigning. So let's gain our three actions. Ursula is going to move to north side. Ursula is going to, we might as well spend our free move from Pathfinder to move to the Curiosity Shop. Uh, at the Curi When I get to the Curiosity Shop, I am going to uh, exhaust field work. Oh, it doesn't have a clue, damn it. Damn. Mm, that's okay, no problem. Okay, so we, uh, we have to spend a resource to parlay with her but we do have the perception, so we can pitch that. Commit the perception, we're four, five, six versus three. Uh, I'm gonna go seven versus three. Uh, no, that doesn't do us any good because the spending a resource doesn't get us anywhere because of that minus five. So we're gonna go six versus three. Uh, we did spend a resource. Chaos bag says minus two. Finally, we do, uh, and we get to draw a card. There's Jake. Jake Williams, our loyal companion. Be nice to see him if we need him. We will find out here in a second. And that was our second action. So we do put a clue on uh, Maria. We chat with her about the artifacts. We tested, so we put a clue on her, which means we go to, if there's one clue on uh, Maria, we can advance. We must remove them and immediately advance. Okay. We will flip her over. All right. Maria's information, Act 2F. Maria takes a puff from her cigarette before responding to your questions. She tells you that she overheard some well-to-do patrons putting down several outrageously pricey bids on the Estly artifacts. I don't even know where these artifacts came from, but those people seem to know exactly what they were looking for, she claims. Perhaps if you follow this trail of money, you'll uncover more about this mysterious group that operates in Arkham's shadows. So we have to remember that both Downtown and Rivertown are Ichtaka's destinations. One at a time in player order, each investigator discards the top card of the encounter deck. Each investigator who discards a treachery card must draw that card. So one at a time, each investigator discards the top card of the encounter deck. If we draw a treachery, we draw that card. Okay, let's do that. We draw the top card of the encounter deck. It is, it is a treachery. It is on Wings of Darkness. Test four agility. If you fail, take one damage and one horror. Then disengage from each non-Night Gaunt enemy engaged with you and move to a central location. I believe that is Rivertown. Okay, so uh, we need to do that first. Okay, so we move, got to test four. How bad is it if we fail? What is Ishtaka's locations? Downtown and Rivertown. Downtown is where that stupid Wizard of the Order is. And Rivertown is where the uh, 
where the other uh, cultist is. Okay, so we have to draw the treachery. So we're going four versus four at the moment. Uh, I am going to use my hyper awareness to go five versus four. Uh, yeah, that's tough. Five versus four, Chaos Bag says Skull. That's a minus one, thankfully, because it's the highest number of Doom on a Cultist enemy. So we do pass. Okay, so we passed the uh, On Wings of Darkness, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Now we can advance to our next, uh, our next act in that one. So we are... Which one are we going to? Uh, strange Occurrences. This is The Brotherhood is Revealed, and this one should be Strange Occurrences. Okay. Act 3E, Strange Occurrences. Ishtaka has found the target of her investigation. The trail of the mysterious cult leads here. A thorough search of the area may, may reveal more. While you are at an, any of Ishtaka's destinations, the first treachery you draw from the encounter deck each round gains surge okay this is a weird <laughs> if there are no clues remaining on each of ishtaka's destinations advance okay so we advance wow that was kind of anticlimactic if there are no clues remaining on each of Ishtaka's destinations, advance her locations were downtown, which has no clues, and Riverside, Rivertown, which has no clues. Okay, so we advance. Fair enough. Okay, well, sure. We advance. Act 3F, Uncovered the Conspiracy. If uh, Ichitaka's destinations were Downtown and Rivertown, that's what we're using. Using information from the bank, you track the bidders to a warehouse in Rivertown. Inside, you find a bounty of information bo about the Estli Art of Relics and Alejandro's expedition. The investigators nearest to Rivertown takes control of the set-aside Ichitaka, the Forgotten Guardian, Remove the remainder of the EF Act deck from the game. If another Act card is in play, continue playing. Otherwise, proceed to R1. So we take control of Ichitaka. Okay, so we get plus two combat now. Interesting. Can we take Han? Yeah, it's going to be, he's five though. And we're still just a four. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, so uh, Ishtaka's destinations were downtown and Rivertown. Uh, we remove the axe from the game and we continue playing since there's still an act deck in, uh, in play. However, we have an issue. We have Ishtaka. She gives us plus one uh, combat, plus two while attacking an enemy with victory X. So if we're attacking Henri DeVoe, we would be at a four versus four. And we'd need to hit him for five damage. That, I don't like those odds. And I don't have a ton of combat icons in this deck, I know that. So I think at this point, I've gained all the VPs I can. I have, uh, I've got four VPs. And so I think I'm just gonna resign at this point. I don't think I can kill, well, I could draw I've got a plan. What does that do? That would do, I'd need to get all the clues at Velma's Diner, which is going to be 
it's not impossible, but it's kind of tricky. Um, we're going to go up to four next turn. We're going to have four doom on it. We're going to add a doom and one to the, th to the uh, wizard. So we're going to go up to four doom of six. So we've got a maximum of two turns remaining. Yeah, I think I'm just going to resign. I don't like, uh, I'm not going to worry about this one. This, uh, this one is uh, not going to be, uh, we're not going to be able to finish Alejandro's plight, I think, in time. Because we've got to get back over to Velma's diner. Then we've got to try to kill Henri, which is going to take us five attacks unless we draw a uh, I've got a plan. So what we'll do, let's, uh, I've got an action left, so I'm going to draw a card. There is a logical reasoning. That is uh, not going to help us. We will go to the upkeep. So we uh, refresh our Pathfinder. We will draw a card. There is an unexpected courage. We gain a resource. Uh, if we draw one of those secrets, though, does that kill us? No, it won't because we've got Ichitaka we can use. We will add a Doom. It is turn 10. We will draw an encounter card. It is a Night Gaunt. Okay, well that seals the deal. <laughs> that pretty much seals the deal. Again, Hunting Night Gaunt, 3 fight, 4 health, 1 uh, evade, Monster Night Gaunt Hunter while attempting to evade Hunting Night Gaunt. Double the negative modifier on each of uh, the Chaos tokens. So now we have to somehow get away from the Night Gaunt and go kill Henri in two turns. And that's just not going to happen. So I think we will simply use our first action to resign. And that will be uh, Threads of Fate. Okay, so that's uh, Threads of Fate. That's uh, uh, the uh, three act decks. Uh, pose a bit of a problem for Octagon, but it's still manageable. Uh, solo, it seems pretty straightforward. I think uh, we got a little bit unlucky there at the beginning that we were not able to uh, to parlay with Maria, and we probably could have had uh, Act 3 done a lot quicker than we did, uh, although we still had to clear downtown uh, that wasn't going to be too big of an issue uh, especially with uh, with Ursula I mean we did get our field work and a pathfinder down very early in this game and we were able to uh, to use that pathfinder to our advantage to get an extra action and between that extra action and the extra action from uh, from Ursula's uh, reaction we were able to really uh, pile on the uh, the extra actions i think i don't know how many we gained over the 10 turns but i know there were some turns where i was taking uh, five actions a turn instead of three so that makes it a lot quicker uh, it's a little bit unfortunate that uh, henry devoe popped where uh, killing him is pretty difficult for uh, for a, an investigator like Ursula, we do need a, uh, I've got a plan. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to look and see where it was. Uh, it was many cards down. One, two, three, four cards down. And we would have had to encounter our, uh, our weakness, Call of the Unknown. Fortunately, our other weakness was way down there. So we didn't draw either weakness. That uh, always helps if you're playing solo or multiplayer for that matter. Uh, it's unfortunately unfortunate that we did get the Wizard of the Order. That speeded up the game. But considering that we were kind of stuck on uh, Henry DeVoe, uh, we uh, will just take the resign option and uh, move on. Now, I think, I can't remember the name of the next scenario pack for some reason. Boundary Beyond, I believe it is. 
Um, we will be, uh, that's coming out in two weeks time, so we will be uh, doing a playthrough of that. I'm also uh, have my reviews of the player cards in Threads of Fate coming up. Overall, I, uh, I like this scenario. I think it's, uh, uh, is it easy, difficult? It seems like it doesn't seem like the act decks are all that onerous. I mean, you only really need one or two clues. And then once you, uh, once you're able to, uh, to get those clues, you don't really need a lot of clues otherwise. Um, so I'd say it's easy in that respect. Uh, Harlan certainly uh, passing that Harlan Earnstone check, evading him by three or more, that is going to be very difficult uh, for for a lot of investigators, including Ursula. So uh, I'm I'm glad I drew that inquiring mind when I did, and that manual dexterity. So if you uh, haven't played this scenario yet, by all means, go out there, pick it up, and uh, give it a try. I uh, quite enjoyed it, and I'm looking through, forward to playing it through with uh, some of the other decks uh, that I've uh, that I've got going uh, at the moment. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this playthrough, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromleng at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromleng. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.